Hello, Mr. Canal. Welcome at our university. Thank you. So, you were speaking about cultural tourism at your presentation. What is cultural tourism? So, cultural tourism is a form of tourism that makes use of a really wide range of cultural resources. So, that might be heritage, it could be music, the arts, uh, foods in a destination, fashion in a destination. Lots of destinations are cultural tourism destinations and they're all slightly different. So to understand what cultural tourism is, you really have to understand what the culture is in a particular place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is it uh, cultural tourism only the monuments? We, maybe we perceive that as only the monuments and the art museums. No, definitely not. Cultural tourism is not just monuments, it's not just art museums. That's a really important part of European cultural tourism, but it's not the only thing. So, every city in Europe has a heritage. Every city in Europe has museums and has monuments. Probably every city in the, in the world. Every city, well, proper every city in the world, exactly, exactly. Um, so that's important and that helps us to understand the history of a place and it under helps us to understand power and politics in a place. But the culture of a destination, the culture of a city is much, much broader than that. It's the food that people eat when they're there. It's what the weather is like. It's, is it a nighttime city or a daytime city? These are all parts of culture as well. So building things isn't, isn't enough. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what tourists like? Do you have any formula for what tourists like, for example, in Europe? What do tourists uh, like the most yeah, in, uh, in some cities? Yeah. Um, Why they go in Paris? Why they go in London? Okay, so people go to different cities for different reasons mm -hmm. and every city has an identity that draws people to it. So Paris is the city of love. People go to Paris because it's romantic and it's beautiful and they've seen it on films and they want to go there and have a, a romantic, meaningful experience. People go to Madrid because it's fun and it's exciting and there's tapas and there's football and there's bullfighting and it's a really exciting, dynamic kind of place. In London for the rain. In London for the rain. <laughs> well, do you know what? People come to London for lots of different reasons. They come to London for the, the royal family. That's so important for our tourism. Um, but they come to London for the football. London is a fantastic football city and that's part of the culture as well. Sport is part of the culture. Of the city. If you were a tourist, why would you come in Skopje? I've wanted to come to Skopje for a really long time and I am a tourist who's interested in the heritage. I'm interested in the fact that Macedonia for 2000 years has been a crossing point for different cultures from the Middle East, from Southeastern Europe, um, uh, through, um, from, uh, from Africa, from Asia, trade routes are coming through. So I find all of that fascinating. But what I really want to know is what is Skopje like now? It's a young, exciting capital city. I've met students from Skopje at different events and they've told me how Ma um, Skopje is a fantastic destination, Macedonia is a great place, I must come. So I know about the history, but I've come for the people. I've come for the people and the culture. What city, is there anything that every city should have for developing tourism? Or yeah. there's different things that cities should have? Ah, it's really difficult. There's no simple formula for what you have to have. I mean, maybe, maybe every city should have good infrastructure, so the, so the citizens, the, so the, the tourists can... The infrastructure is important, but I think more than the infrastructure, it's the welcome, mm -hmm. okay? So how welcoming are the local people? Do the taxi drivers, are the, do they steal your money? Oh. Okay, I go that, to That's Sankt. a worldwide problem. Worldwide <laughs> problem, exactly. So I went to, I was, in, um, I was in Naples recently, and the taxi drivers are famously thieves, okay? <laughs> so you can deal with that, but they're great guys. They're funny, they help tourists, they can be your tour guide. The, um, everyone in the hotels is really friendly. That's what destinations need. It, they need to be able to welcome tourists, because when you go home, you remember the people. You remember the waiter who served you. You remember the man in the hotel who helped you when you were sick. You remember the people on the street who helped you with directions. So cities need to be ready and welcoming for tourists. Everything else comes from that. You can have every monument and every tourist attraction in the world, but if the local people don't want tourists, tourists will never come back. You said in your speech that uh, we all think that uh, photographing things are, is the most important thing yeah. in uh, tourism, but you said that it's not true. No, we, we, we all take photos as tourists, but we, we take a few photos with nobody in them. Here's the famous building, here's the famous monument, but actually we take photos with people in them. 
and we take photos of the things we've done because what we really want to do as tourists is have experiences. We want to spend time with our friends and our family. So taking photos is part of it, especially with Facebook and Instagram. You have to take the photo <laughs> to show all your friends you were there. Yeah, you but once you've to. done that, then you can get on with being a tourist and having a good time. So how tourism affects the cultural heritage of the city? Yeah. Can we change the cultural heritage? Can we change the culture, of the, culture yeah. of the city just because of the tourists? Well, I don't think any city has a fixed heritage. Every city changes and develops over time. And lots of cities have changed with tourism. Um, some cities have really ancient monuments and um, they can't change. They have to be preserved, they have to be looked after. But some cities build new attractions and they build new destinations for tourists. And that's fine, but the most important thing is having, it, is having a management of these things. It can't just be politicians who are in charge and it can't just be tourism businesses that are in charge. There has to be a cooperation between all of these people and the tour operators and the tourists themselves to value what is important in a city and to enjoy the fun stuff because the fun stuff is important too. We don't want to go to a city and walk around being really quiet like we're in a museum. We want to have fun and you have to enjoy yourself. Can you overbuild the city, just uh, in uh, the desire to develop the city for tourists? Can you overbuild it? Um, you can create areas of cities that have too much development in them. It, that, it, that is a real, it is a real danger. Um, is that a fact of the number of tourists? Yeah, and the, and the space that's available. I mean, I know in Skopje there's been lots of development, lots of building around the city centre to make it more attractive to tourists and to international investment. Now that's great, but you could come here and you could see all of that in two hours, and then what do you do? Okay, that's the next question. You have a beautiful new historic area in the city, uh, an old historic area in the city. You have a new area in the city with these new buildings that are beautiful, okay? very expensive, but beautiful. But what next? What do I do tomorrow? Can Where do just, I go next? Is just a way that Skopje should develop for tourism? Yeah, I think it's about finding ways to move tourists around the city, to see different areas of the city, and also to leave Skopje, to go to other areas, to go to Ochrid, okay, to go to Stip to go to different places and find out what do other cities have to offer. Because tourists come to a city and they stay for two nights, maybe three nights. But if you want to spread the benefits around the country, you have to give them more opportunities. Thank you, Mr. James, for this conversation. It's a pleasure.